This is about you. Is everybody got that? Sir. It's about this football team, about your character, about your heart, your grit. No going out all freaking season. No. We will now be mentioned as one of the greatest teams in college football history. Way to go, man. Sir. You know what we did? We took it one game at a time, man. And we did blink. No matter what happened, guys, you never blink. You guys understand that? Thank you, man. This is what y'all did. Thank you, man. This is what y'all did. Thank you, man. Let's go. Thank you, man. Talk to him. Thank you, man. This is what y'all did. Let's go. All right, let's go. And the Tigers of LSU, a team of destiny and a team for ages, celebrate on the field here tonight in New Orleans inside the Superdome, capturing the national title. Hello and welcome into Tigers Roar. I'm Jonathan Poche, joined by a very special guest, someone you're very familiar with, Mr. Tommy Christ and TK here on a Wednesday evening. Great to see you, TK. Man, glad to be here. Appreciate y'all having me out here. Uh, pretty big uh, night the other night and lots of stuff going on, so happy to be uh, back on the set of Tigers. That's right. Roar. Tigers go 15-0, national champions defeat the Clemson Tigers 42-25 this past Monday in New Orleans. The dome was rocking. It was just LSU's night. They went down 10 points, their largest deficit of the season. Reared back 42 to 25. TK, I know you had the Tigers winning, so you weren't shocked. Great game. No, they were the better football team, and that proved out over four quarters. You always hear play four quarters. You know, Clemson's very good, and they're, they're probably being a playoff next year because everybody else in the ACC is not good. Right. They're probably going to be undefeated, win their conference, maybe one loss. They got a good chance to, to be back, and of course they got their quarterback back. Jonathan, when they were up 17-7, I had these thoughts like, okay, I still I didn't think LSU would lose. I'm thinking Clemson's a little better than I thought, and I thought I did give them a lot of respect, but then I, I, I reverted back to the talent is just too much here at LSU, uh, four quarters, and and that proved out to be the case. I was a little high on my prediction of 50 to 33, but I did have the 17 point gap figured out. So I, I did pretty good with a few predictions this year. Sometimes you get lucky, but it, it was a wonderful night for LSU, the, the school, the athletic department, the football team, all of the fans, the state of Louisiana. Just a, a, a wonderful thing in a lot of ways. I think being in New Orleans, playing in the Dome, That's right. added a little spice to the big picture. That's right. You know, and it, it was just a, a remarkable night, one that LSU Tiger fans will remember forever. And it's going to be kind of like the Cannon run back. About 10 years from now, you'll be able to find 400,000 people who are going to tell you they were in the Dome that night. Right. Okay, and we know there weren't that many. But it's uh, a memory for a lifetime. Probably won't ever see that again. Right. I don't think you see 15 and 0. I don't think you see 60 touchdowns, all the awards that were won, including the Heisman Trophy. But you know, they, they'll Coach Joe said they're going right back to work, get back on a recruiting trail, and uh, it was just remarkable. Let me talk about Coach Joe, a guy from Louisiana, he's got that Cajun accent. A lot of people used to make fun of how he talked. Took that as internal motivation to be better. And look, got to be happy for a guy in his dream job, bring a championship back to Louisiana. Well, you know, he signed with LSU out of high school. Same signing class as Alan Risher, mm -hmm. who's been on Pelican many a time. But he, he left like out. 10, 11 days into right. the August camp. Alan, I remember Alan telling me, he don't remember meeting him. Now, <laughs> Orgeron was a defensive guy, Alan was a quarterback. He don't, he, he, no story like I met him or we right. had a beer together. There was none of that. You know, that's how fast he was out of here. But if, if you look at his pedigree, He's been around a lot of great coaches. That's right. Great. That's right. He's been around successful programs. Coached with the Saints for one year. I mean, he's been around people that have a tremendous amount of success. And then he failed at Ole Miss, and that's in part why he succeeded here. Yeah. It was Michael Jordan said, the reason I succeed is because right. I have failed. Okay? Right. So you credit O for learning from that, and you put all your experiences together, and, you know, he's a national champion. Nobody can ever take that away from him. That's right. Very humble guy. Always gave credit to assistant coaches and the players. He knows you have to get great players to come in and play. Look, Coach Joe was a great recruiter, and it showed up on Monday with all that talent. His initial press conference, he said, one, I remember this, he's, and I've quoted it many times. He said, one of the things I learned in this business is great players make great coaches. That's right. He says, we're going to go get great players. And, you know, for the last 20 years, LSU has recruited very well among the best in the nation. Yeah. Winning a national title, it's proven. 
that kicks up the recruiting level significantly. That's right. So they're going to be able to continue to go out nationally, you know, put the fence around Louisiana and, and get the best players they can. And then obviously they got a coaching staff that can develop them. You know, That's so right. Recruiting's two steps. You got to get them. You got to develop them. That's right. And they have developed these guys. You know, Joe Burrow developed, and we can go on and on. But I think the stat that grabs me the most, Jonathan, and I mean we've all read a million stats, but the fact that not only did they beat seven top ten teams, but only two of those seven wins were in Tiger Stadium That's in Baton right. Rouge. That's right. The rest were either neutral site or on the road. That ain't happening again. Right, first time ever a team beat the one through four in the preseason poll. I mean, that's outstanding. Of course, you got Clemson, Alabama, Georgia, and Oklahoma. What a pedigree for this team. First time that the team ranked number one by the college football playoff committee ended up winning. And right. I know that's only been five, six years, whatever right. it's been. But it's the first time the number one seed won it all. So, I mean, you, they, they got to build a separate room at the football right. ops building to put all the records and the trophies, the, the individual awards, the team awards. Uh, I mean, the, they, they can't, they're going to have to print media guide and then another guide with the records they set right. this year. And there's been a lot of talk nationally about, I mean, is this the best team overall ever in college football history? And look, that's very objective. But what this team accomplished, I mean, that's fact. All the awards, all the records, most touchdowns, most points in, in, in NCAA history. It's hard to take that away from those guys. Well, I, I mentioned in the podcast that the mere fact that they're in the debate, the discussion, the argument about best team right. ever ought to tell you all you need to know. But my two cents were, been around a long time, yep. a lot longer than you. They're the best team based on what they accomplished and the records they set, the Heisman Trophy. I mean, you, we go on and on. So I think they're the best team, and that's what I'll do respect to a couple of Nebraska teams that were great, Florida State, the Miami some of Spurrier's. Teams, some of Spurrier's uh, Florida Gators, yep. Miami Hurricanes had their run. You know, I mean that—that's what all due respect to those yep. people. But it's harder to win now than it was then, right? Because you know, back then when the season started, you had three, maybe four teams that had a real shot to win it. Right. Now the season starts, you got 10, 11, 12 that have a real shot right. to win it, and then Cinderella stories can always pop in. But it was—it's. Uh, I'm just happy to be a part of it as a as a fan, a uh, kind of a member of the media, just. I had a lot of friends that were at the game, you know, my, my children and grandchildren were all into it. Yeah. I'm just happy to be along for the ride. There was a lot of talk about Heisman Trophy winners coming back to play the national championship and not doing so well. Jamie Swinston did win and won the national title for Florida State a few years ago. Joe Burrow, <laughs> there was never any question. This was his game to win, came in calm, cool and collected, did the job. You see the clip uh, before the game, during all the media stuff, it was either the day before the game. So we had a picture of him. Emily Dixon. He was about 13 or yep. 14 years yep. old. And she goes, this, this looks like a Heisman Trophy winner. And he said, show him the picture. That's a national champion. Yep. He said that well before the kickoff. He had confidence. That's what you need at that spot. Look, he knew what his team could accomplish, and they went out and did it. Uh, Got to give credit to all those receivers. who are now standing job. Thad Moss, most receptions for a tight end in LSU history. Look, before this season, Dwayne Bowe had the most touchdown catches in LSU history for one season. That got beat three times. I mean, the way they spread the ball out to all these dynamic receivers, it was finally what LSU fans wanted to see. Last year, Joe Burrow threw 16 touchdowns. Right. This year, we know he threw 60. Yeah. If you just take the 44 TDs he improved by, that right. would have led the nation. Yep, outstanding. <laughs> we have a lot here on Tigers Rule. We'll get you back to Monday night, LSU versus Clemson. We'll also hear from Mike Scarborough doc, from TigerBait.com. We have a lot of great stuff here. we hear from some players, hear from Coach Show after the game. Before we take our first break, we'll let TK tell you what he's been doing now at U-Triple-S-A. Yeah, Louisiana U-Triple-S-A and Texas. I'm the marketing director. I'd invite you to connect on social media. It's real easy. Just look for Louisiana U-Triple-S-A, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, Mid-February is when all the youth tournaments are going to start throughout Louisiana, throughout Texas. Uh, elevating the game is the theme for U-Triple-S-A this year. And uh, bigger and better things are, are happening, and it's all about more kids playing more baseball. I'm happy to be a part of that team, and it's a lot of fun. So check out Louisiana U Triple S A on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. The event pages have all the tournament schedules. Check it out; uh, you'll enjoy it, and we appreciate it. We're here at Scoreboards 10655 Corsi Boulevard. Come check us out each and every Wednesday around 5:30 for the live taping. This is Tiger Shore. Come back and join us after this break. We're from Coach Joe and some of the players. After Monday night's national championship game against the Clemson Tigers, this is Tigers Roar. Oh, remember what these trips were like before you put the screens in the back seats? 
<laughs> I don't want to think about it. <laughs> are we there yet? I'm hungry. Where are we? Go, go, go. That game should keep them occupied. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Dad. Oh, in your face. Don't make me get back there. You don't need a new car to have new technology. Mike's Audio, conveniently located on Airline Highway near the corner of Blue Bonnet. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugier, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. Clarence Bugs here. Coach Roger Kador would take the time to tell you how to catch our brand new show, The Roger Kador Show, but as you can see, he's kind of busy right now out at scoreboards. Baton Rouge's newest sports grill with food that is absolutely amazing. Catch the show 8 o'clock Tuesday nights, 6.30 p.m. on Wednesdays and on Pelican Television's YouTube channel as well. You want to come out and have a great time. It's awesome, isn't it, Coach? Mm-hmm. Told you. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. I am Jonathan Poche, joined by Tommy Chrysan here at Scoreboards on a Wednesday evening, 10655 Corsi Boulevard. Come check it out. Great food, great atmosphere, great place to watch the games. I want to bring you guys back to Monday night in the Superdome. LSU Tigers taking on the Clemson Tigers for the whole bag of marbles. We'll ask Greg the truck to run those highlights. Me and Tommy will talk over them. Look, TK, a lot of Tigers fans were nervous in the beginning of the game. They had this one uh, flash play, but it was called back by the officials. You kind of felt like the fix was on early. Well, you got to give Clemson credit. LSU's first three drives started inside their own 10-yard line. 
Now, if you're playing Vanderbilt, you're going to go 96 yards and score. But, you know, you're playing Clemson, who's won 29 straight games. So Clemson kind of won that field position more early in the game. But, you know, LSU was able to overcome it, and uh, Clemson threw a few punches. LSU withstood them and overcame it. And again, the, the pure talent in, of this football team, offense, defense, special teams, you know, was able to separate from Clemson going forward. The foul college football, you know anything about Brett Venables, the defensive coordinator for the Clemson Tigers? You knew he was going to show Joe Burrow or something he hadn't seen on tape all season. Did a good job starting both halves and kind of disguising what they were trying to do. But once Joe Burrow found out they were playing man on man with uh, Jamar Chase on the outside, it was all over. Yeah, that, that cornerback doesn't want to see Joe, Jamar Chase anymore. Not a Blindekoff yeah. Award winner definitely yeah, had a so, great game. Know, but, you know, football's a game of adjustments. You know, everybody's got a game plan. Then you got a plan B and a plan C. But when the game starts unfolding, sometimes you got to go to plan 23 to, to uh, you know, make the right things happen because uh, both teams are, are, are adjusting and you're strategizing and trying to set up things. And, you know, I thought LSU throwing short a lot first. They were trying to take get them to take some bait so they could get over the top of them, which they ended up doing. Right. The LSU uses a lot of formations, kind of helps them let, let them know what the defense is going to do. Uh, that also kind of set up a problem for LSU when they went to those bunch formations. Uh, they see the target and call. That was a huge play in the game. It was a three-point game at that time. They, they got to change that rule, okay? Somehow they got to differentiate from targeting with an intent to hurt or to, you know, or the targeting where it's a 15-yard penalty but no ejection. I right. mean, and that's going to be a gray area, but, you know, sometimes you, you could draw that line. But, you know, Clemson didn't want to lose one of their best players, the linebacker there, and it was letter of the law. It was targeting. That's right. I don't think he intended. He didn't, he didn't go over there and say, I'm going to leave with the crown of my head and, hit, and hel hit this guy in the helmet. I don't think that happened. But you got to follow the rules as they are. I fully expect it. There's been a national cry for that too. That you know you got to change that up. You know you used to have a five-yard face mask and a 15-yard, and then they, they condensed that into just 15. Well, you got to figure out you know a, a targeting penalty that's 15 yards and a targeting penalty that includes an ejection. And I have a, a possible solution to help that in college football and in the NCAA. You need to put two more refs on the field. Yeah put some guys deep down the field. These refs can't keep up with these skilled athletes when they're going and all these five receivers are going out. It used to be two. You got to put two more refs so that that ref doesn't have to backpedal 20, 30 yards. And the NFL should do it too. Because look, Jonathan, you, you, you don't remember this because you're too young, but I remember when they put a third basketball on the basketball court. Everybody said, oh, that's going to be crazy. Now you wouldn't think right, of right. playing a pro or a college or even a high school game without three refs. Why'd they do that? Because three refs could better cover the court. Right. Okay. Now, if you put two more refs on the football field, you can better cover the skilled athletes that when five or six of them are going out on the pass route, you got better, better coverage. You're still going to have mistakes. Right. But you, I think you'd be better with two more officials on the field, but they don't care what I think. And we've talked about it a lot. It's it's hard for these older guys to keep up with these athletes. I mean, they're just too fast. They literally cannot keep up with them running down the field. In the Saints game, when Taysom Hill threw that ball deep to whoever he threw it to, Harris, the, the referee was doing a full-blown backpedal. Right. If you look at the replay. Yep. And they were in front of him, and he was going as fast as he could backpedaling. No shot. You can't, you can't see what's going right. on. You you can't. You're running full speed forward. You can't see. Backpedaling, your eyes start bouncing. But if you had more refs deep on the field, you had some refs that could have got to that spot. They see some mayhem after the game on the field. Everybody celebrating. Offensive MVP for the championship was Joe Burrow, 31 for 49, 463 yards. Got five touchdowns. Did get sacked five times. I thought it was a tribute to Clemson's defensive front. Clemson's um, good. <laughs> they are. They have some studs on that field. They did have Simmons, who's going to who's the. They Bucks played for the national winner. championship four years in a row. Right. They won two of them. That's right. They had a good football. Team. Lawrence will be the number one pick next year. They got a lot of guys who will be in the NFL. That's right. So you, you, you can't mm. forget that when you see Burrow get sacked or you, you see a Lair get stopped for no gain. I mean, it's it's going to happen when you're playing somebody that quality. 42 to 25 was the final. You know Ed O could have punched it in if he wanted to at the end. Chase did drop the touchdown. So it could have been more points for the Tigers. They're happy with the win. There you see the final right there. Joe Burrow, he was the man saw smoking that cigar in, a, in the facility after, huh? Yeah. Got, got a yeah. little heat How for about that. that cop that came in and said, <laughs> we're going to arrest y'all? Hey, every party has one. It's called the buzzkill. Some other cops said, you need to get out of here. I mean, come on. They just want, I mean, 
I get it, but gee, I bet that guy's not on that detail anymore. You just hope all LSU fans are able to really soak it in. You don't know when you'll ever see something like this happen again. 15-0, setting every record in the book. They were the best to ever do it. It'll go down in history. Hope you enjoyed it, LSU fans. And, and, and time, I think, is going to make it even more important in history. Right. When some of these records are still around five, six, seven years from yep. now. And if nobody else has gone undefeated, it's tough to go undefeated. That's right. You know, no doubt. So, and, you know, if you we get five years down the road, I mean, you're going to say, hey, looking back, that thing was pretty good. There you see the celebration information, some notes of change. They're thinking about moving to the PMAC for the celebration. I knew because of some inclement weather expected in Baton Rouge with the parade at 11 around the campus. The, the parade route. It's going to be an outstanding time. There's going to be some drinking out there. No. It's going to be a party. Yeah, it's going to be another party. And now a lot of the uh, establishments in New Orleans and Baton Rouge and Lafayette are having like championship party like Thursday night. Yep. They're all trying to capitalize on everybody selling a T-shirt. That's right. I mean, you know, it's, uh, it's a money grab, but hey, people are happy and, you know, it's... it's uh, I mean, how cool is it, though, that it keeps happening in New Orleans? I mean, four championships for the Tigers. All in New Orleans, three in the Superdome. Yeah, we gotta look up when's it coming back to New Orleans. All right, look, it's, it. a, it's a ways down the road, yeah. but uh, get your tickets cheap. Yeah, get them now. Buy them right now. Yeah, That's ticket right. prices they came down a little. Right, we'll kick off, but not a lot. Right, I read it might have been the second highest game uh, ticket price for Superdome history. Uh, they they've hosted some events down there. Uh, it was a big game. It should the game should be there every year. Super Bowl. I mean, New Orleans knows how to host those events. Yep. Everything's close enough. Yep. You walk from Bourbon Street to the Dome and vice versa, right. especially if you're in a, with a crowd. But, you know, you got to move it around. 15 minutes from the airport to all the hotels, all the dining you could money. ever want. Follow the money. We're going to bring you into the post-game press conference. Coach O, the offensive MVP, Joe Burrow, and the defensive MVP, Patrick Queen, all answer questions from the media. We'll let you guys see what they had to say this past Monday after the 42-25 to victory over those Clemson Tigers. Here is Coach O, Joe Burrow, and Patrick Queen. How oh, great fans for being here. I mean, we left that state, uh, the hotel today. What a phenomenal group we had. It just gave us the energy and all night. And they've been with us all year. And give the credit to our players. Uh, those guys fought. We started working last year, January 17th. Uh, they worked their tails off with Tommy Moffitt. Uh, they did the right things, character, grit, determination. They had their player-only practices this uh, this summer. I didn't even know about them, led by these guys on the side. We took it one game at a time. We won as a team. Got to give the credit to our coaching staff, uh, Jack Marucci, Tommy Moffitt, all the trainers, and uh, just a tremendous night uh, for, for the LSU Tigers, tremendous, tremendous night for the purple and gold, a tremendous night for the state of Louisiana. We are so proud to represent Again, as a reminder, we'll take questions for the players. Give us a minute to get you the mic, and let's go ahead and give us your name and affiliation. We'll start right here in the very front row. Michael Cobble, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Joe, uh, the cigar celebrating tonight, and uh, I guess just could you take us back to the beginning of this game, kind of figuring it out as you guys make the adjustments throughout. Were you injured? during the course of the game, and how did you respond? I was fine. I was just fine. Uh, they had a great plan coming in. I mean, we knew they would. Brent Venables is the best in the country and uh, what he does, and, you know, he was mixing up the looks. I honestly couldn't get, couldn't figure out where they were blitzing from all night. We were just, we had great play calls, great great coaching staff. I mean, this was, this was a long time coming. This kind of speechless right now. This was fun. Right down here, very front row. Uh, Joe, Doug Mouton, WWL-TV in New Orleans. Was it a point early in the game where you recognized they were underplaying Jamar Chase and you were just going to keep going as long as they were giving you a one-on-one -on -one with him, you were just going to keep going there? Yeah, you know, the first couple of series, I didn't think there was any way that they were just going to play man with Jamar. So I wasn't really looking his way. And then I got back to the sideline after the second drive. I was like, they really are playing man-to-man -man with Jamar. So we started... Going, going to him heavy, and I mean, he he played so well, and that's just the kind of guy that he is. He's worked so hard for that. All of our guys. Left I mean, side. Oh. Sorry, go ahead. I'm good. I'm Left side of the aisle. We're gonna go right here in the mid section. Oh, Joe Bill Bender, Sporting News. I'm. I know you said you're speechless, but um, for you to, for what's been made of your journey, and for you to deliver on this stage, whether it was people in Louisiana. 
Ohio State fans or even the people in Athens, Ohio, what's it mean to you to deliver this performance while all of those people were cheering you on? Feels good. I don't know what I don't know what else to say. I mean, there's there's been so many people that have come into this from people that have helped me along my journey from Ohio, Louisiana, everywhere. And we couldn't have done it with a better group of guys. Not not just football players, but great, great men that I, I just feel blessed to, to be a part of this. Okay, we'll come down here to the front row. Joe, Steve Moulton, ESPN Radio out of Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, that first pass uh, to Moss that was called back felt like it took some juice out of the offense. And then to finally get it back, uh, what really kick-started that offense after that first penalty? Yeah, that was, you know, we felt like if we had got that one, we would have been rolling on that first drive and we would have kept rolling. And it did kind of take the wind out of our sails for a second. And defense stepped up all game until we started to get rolling. And, you know, we feel like you can't hold us down for forever. You know, I think we're too explosive. Our coaches are too good. Our players are too good. Our O-line is too good. And, you know, they had a great plan coming in. Like I said, Coach Venables is, is great at what he does. And it just took us a while to get it figured out. Come over here, standing on our far left. Hi, Joe. Mark Myers, AP Hi. Broadcasting. Uh, Heisman and then a national title in just a few short weeks. Tell me uh, what kind of emotions are you feeling now? Some pretty good emotions. This is, I mean, this is special. This doesn't, this doesn't happen. Uh, this doesn't come around every, every year. You know, this, this is a special group of guys that really came together and it's as close of a group that I've ever been around. This, I'm just so happy I was able to do it with, with Coach O. Patrick and, and the rest of the guys in that locker room. We're now going to move over to our far right that's standing. Joe Wilson, Alexander over here from The Advocate. You talked so much about this incredible season that you weren't reflecting yet that you were going to do it when it was over. Is it starting to set in what you've accomplished? Not yet. We're still celebrating. Give us, give us a couple days. Uh, you know, we got, we got tonight. We got the rest of this week. You know, we're going to enjoy this one. This a lot of work was put into this that, that nobody ever saw. Saturdays, Sundays, seven days a week for, for 12 months. This, this, is, this is special. Going to go up on the TV riser on our far right. Joe here in the back. Uh, Daniel Brown, KTBS out of Shreveport. Ten-point game. Terrace Marshall catches that touchdown pass. His saying is meant to be. At that point, did that championship feel meant to be? You now, Terrace, you know, he... he it took him a while to get going, but he made the championship play. And I couldn't be happier for that guy. He, he's worked harder than ever, anybody on this team. And he, he's worked on his craft for a long time. Five-star coming in, had some bumps, bumps in the road. And for him to make that play, I'm so happy for him and his family. We're going to go back here in the back right-hand aisle. Joe, Andrew Clay, KTC, and Lafayette, you will be a hero in this state for decades. Can you grasp that? Where are you? There you are. Sorry, can you say that again? Yeah, you will be a hero in this state for decades. Can you grasp that magnitude? You know, I think, you know, this, this, what we did tonight can't be taken away from us. I don't know, I don't know about the whole hero thing, but I know this, this national championship will be remembered for a long time in Louisiana. To, to do it in New Orleans, is even more special. And, you know, this is going to be remembered for a long time. Stay on the right-hand side, third row. Uh, Patrick, Billy Witz with the New York Times. Uh, a couple questions. What, at the end of both half, or the, the latter part of the first half and the latter part of the second half, the defense really kind of buckled down. What, can you kind of talk about what, uh, you know, what you did to get rolling? And then also, um, you know, if you can describe, I guess, at the point in the last couple of years where you felt like maybe it was Joe's team to a degree? Um, you know, at the end of the first half, Coach Arana sat us down, calmed us down, you know. We was really anxious being out there, so we just, you know, all gathered together, you know, to play a team defense. 
And we always knew this was Joe's team from the day he came in. He was competing in sprints. So just for Joe to be that kind of person to come out on day one and try to give us the best that he can, we already knew it was his team. Stay over in the same section, slightly further back. Ed, Dan Newton from The Athletic. What did you um, think coming into the game about the potential of, of what a victory would mean, and, and how do you feel personally now? You know, I, I talked to the team about uh, the focus all week was to speak Clemson, not thinking the magnitude of, hey, we're going to win the national championship, what's going to happen, all that. So uh, I'll focus on it, and then the guys just followed it, man. Our focus has been one game at a time, one one uh, one day at a time. And our guys did a tremendous job. Uh, now I think that, you know, uh, this team is going to be mentioned as one of the greatest teams in college football history, 15 and 0. One of the greatest teams in LSU history, so I led by some of the greatest players. Uh, give them all the credit. But you know, that's for you guys to decide. We're national champs. Well, we're 15 and 0. Whether we mention as one of the greatest teams or not, that doesn't matter to me. Uh, I think that we're going to get to work. We'll go to class on Wednesday. We'll start working on next year. This will be our last question for the players. You guys, right here in the front. Uh, this will be for Ed and for for Patrick. Forced uh, Matt Moscona, ESPN Baton Rouge. He forced Clemson into nine punts. What worked so well, and did you think you could have that kind of success? Yeah. I think the, the one thing is we stopped a 10 I thought our guys did a tremendous job of not letting him run the football on us. Uh, we knew Trevor was going to make some plays. Uh, they made some plays downfield. But you know what? I thought the coach around had a tremendous plan of getting pressure. Uh, we never panicked. And uh, those three and outs and those punts were critical in the ball game. I think this guy here, Patrick Queen, had a great game. And, you know, we had we had to tackle in space. Had great athletes in space. And this guy made some great tackles tonight. Um, Coach Arana, you know, had a great game plan since day one when we started studying them. And we trusted and we went to work on it. And just to be able to come into this game and be able to make those type of plays, I just want to give God the glory for it. And I just want to thank Coach O for believing in me and be able to play this position. DK, this is Patrick Queen. Got to tip your hat to that guy. Man, who thought it was going to be starting after Devin White went to the pros. He had a meeting with Coach O. Coach O said, look, you're going to have to compete. He did what he had to do, came to work every week, MVP of the national championship. Well, you know, there's a lot of stories on this LSU football team. You know, from Queen to Burrow to some of the other transfers and guys who had issues. It ought to be a lesson to student athletes and high school guys, junior high guys, even little league guys that, you know, sometimes you just got to put your nose down and keep working. That's Get right. yourself better. You know, it's all about your team. Make yourself better. Give the coach a reason that he can't not put you in there. You know, get, make it where he's got to put you in and can't take you out. And not everybody's going to succeed in that plan, but those who end up with the stories like we, and we got stories at other schools too, those are the guys who it ends up happening for when you don't stop, you keep working, and you, you know, you, you make yourself better. That's what you got to do. And some people can't get better. You sit the bench, you don't play no more, something. Yeah. We have a lot more here on Tigers. We're including <laughs> the second half of that press conference. Coach Joe answers some more questions. We'll let you guys hear from that. We come back right after this break, right here on Tigers Roar. Creel Tree Service is a licensed and insured tree service providing tree and stump removal, topping, trimming, cabling, pruning, and fertilizing. We have free stump removal with takedowns, free estimates, affordable rates, and senior citizens discounts. Call 774-TREE. That's 774-8733. Get your yard ready for the warmer weather. If it deals with a tree, call me, Creel Tree Service, 774-8733. That's 774-TREE. When my wife and I started Relief Windows, what we were trying to do, what our goal was, to give a quality job to a homeowner. Everybody's scared of contractors. We wanted to change the mold of what that is. Not showing up on time, not answering the phone, somebody running with your money. The reason why you should pick Relief Windows to do your renovation of your home, windows, doors, hardy plank or siding, is because of the experience, quality, service of our company. Service is everything we have. It's the foundation of our company. We're gonna show up on time, we're gonna do the job right, over 60% of our customers is customer referral. 
We're a local company here in Baton Rouge, built in Baton Rouge, staying in Baton Rouge. Okay. The job's not done until you're happy and we're happy. It's built the old fashioned way, with a handshake. Here at Relief Windows, it's an honor to be official window door and signing company of LSU Athletics from one winning team to another. Ah, uh, remember the smell of vinyl? What happened to all your old records? Lost in a move? Thrown out by the X? Get them back! Classic Vinyls Record Store and Collectibles, 13847 Corsi, where you can find all old vinyls, all genres of music, rock, country, blues, and R&B. Classic Vinyls and Collectibles behind Mary Lee Donuts and Corsi. If they don't have it, they'll get it. Look for them on Facebook, Classic Vinyls. Sponsors of Classic Vinyls, Classic Rock Night Thursdays at Scoreboards on Corsi. I'll leave for a little while. And all you other letters think you can take over my town. Look at you. None is even a vow. If the people want the money they deserve for their accident. They ain't guaranteed. Mm. And as for you other letters, it's time you were erased. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. I've seen a lot of things during my life, more bad things than good. I've lived in a lot of places, but never a home. I don't think anybody cares about me anymore. And now, I'm tired. Signed, Brian, age 11. Abused and neglected children in East Baton Rouge Parish are in dire need of CASA volunteers. Please call 379-8598 today. Change a life of hurt into a life of hope. Hello. Hola. Ni hao. Experience what the Baton Rouge International School can offer your children. Now welcoming displaced students for short and long-term stability. Here on Tigers Roar, I'm John DePoche, joined by Tommy Chrysan, talking about the Monday night championship against LSU and Clemson. 42-25 was the final. Coach O finally gets his championship, whatever be known as a national champion. No one ever be take, taken away from him. Got to be happy for a guy who was signed as an interim, faced a lot of heat. Nobody really thought he was the guy that was going to be the man. A lot of sexy names were thrown out at the time. You know, Tom Herman, Jimbo, who have you. But Coach O gets the job, and he has dominated the job. Well, he did what we were just talking about that student athletes need to do. He put his head down, and he kept working. All right. Okay. When he got hired, I said, A, I think he deserves a shot. And B, if he's not successful, it will not be because he didn't bust his tail 24-7. Right. Well, he has busted his tail 24-7, hired some really good coaches, support staff. I mean, everybody in the football ops building contributes. Yep. He's done that, and most importantly, they've developed the great players they put on, they put in a uniform. They said he would, he did everything he said he would do: recruit great players, change the offense. That certainly happened this past year. Hire some great assistants, give them all the credit. He's always on brand, talking about the great people of Louisiana, pushing the recruit in every chance that he gets. He's really good at recruiting. These kids love Coach O. Yeah, no, they, they do. And you know, all kids love their coach. I love the guy that gave me a scholarship at Southeastern a long time ago and have talked to him a little bit recently after a long gap. But no, they, they and they, they know what work got put in. See, and for going forward, I don't know if you're going to get to this later, but you know, LSU, they got a basket in the glory here, but they don't need to remember 15 and 0. They got to remember how they got there that's right. and then try to repeat that, the process. Right. Stealing Saban's word there, but it, that's, that's the way it is. That's right. It's not about the success you want, but it's what you can handle. LSU now reached the top of the mountain. As Nick Saban says, once you reach the top of the mountain, you become the mountain. Everybody's trying to climb to get where you're at and, and you push gotta you remember how you got there. That's right. It's hard, all about hard work. The extra reps, the hard work, the, you know, studying the game plan or watching that extra couple of minutes of film. I mean, that's what it takes. Well, here is the Cajun head coach, Coach Ogeron, taking more questions this past Monday at the Superdome with his Tigers defeated Clemson 42-25. to 
Here is national champion head coach Ed Ogeron. There's so much talk about what this means for Louisiana, but for, for your small hometown on the bayou, just no one really has ever even heard of it. What, what does it mean for, for that community to get, bring this for them? You know, I remember growing up there, man, losing was an option. It was not an option, man. You have to win. They went in many basketball. You had to win in the backyard. The Cajun people took a lot of pride in who they were. Uh, LSU was big, obviously, watching Ronnie S.J. and them play. So this is going to mean a lot to them. I mean, uh, uh, they're very prideful. It means a lot to everybody in the state of Louisiana. Everybody bled the purple and gold. I think it's a tremendous night for everybody. As a reminder, please give us your name and affiliation. We'll stay in the same section right here in the back. Uh, Coach, uh, Bill Bender, Sporting News. Uh, third and 10, late in the first half, you uh, call a timeout, or there was two timeouts taken. Joe takes that draw down to the six-yard line. Uh, just talk about that call, or don't talk about it, I guess. You know, what went into that play call, and what did that show about Joe's toughness to make that play? Well, uh, we, we didn't want to have a penalty and uh, go back to the third and 15, and uh, when the clock was about to run out, we didn't feel like we had the right play called. And, you know, Steve said, Coach, I need a timeout. So all I did was call a timeout. And then obviously Steve made the play, he made the call. Uh, Joe, Joe's going to take the ball in his hands. Uh, some of those plays uh, tonight uh, were passes called that Joe ran. Some of the plays tonight were runs that Joe passed. And so uh, just give the great players a chance to make opportunities, uh, make plays, and he did it. Stay over here in the second row on our left. Uh, Jeff Nowak with The Advocate. Um, you know, yesterday Joe got to meet uh, Drew Brees, which yeah. was talked about for a while. You have a lot of guys with the New Orleans connections with Jamar uh, and others. You know, did winning this in the Superdome, you know, talk about any of the added significance there. Do you think that kind of is more impactful? Because I think it's magical. I really do. I think that when we saw that the national championship would be in the Superdome at the beginning of the year, we set out target on that, although we did not talk about it. And uh, we felt that... Uh, once we come in the Superdome, we come out victorious because of the home field advantage. It was great to have Drew Brees yesterday at practice. Uh, I spent one year with him. He and Joe are a lot alike in a lot of ways as far as their work ethic, as far as their leadership on the football team. I remember watching Drew Brees, the seven on seven. He ran it, and it was the best seven on seven I ever saw. And there wasn't another coach out there. So Joe and he are a lot alike. I think that uh, Drew Brees and his wife were great representations of the state of Louisiana. We're proud of him. Let's go right here in the very front. Coach, I was Steve Moulton, ESPN Radio out of Huntsville. And uh, ultimately, what are you going to remember this season about of all going through the West, going through Texas, huh. uh, I mean, going through Oklahoma, and now just yeah. this experience? What are you most going to remember this season for? Yeah, I just think the, the character and the grit of this football team. Uh, Jack Marucci and Tommy Moffitt keeping us together, keeping us in shape. I felt like we could have played for another month. Uh, we, we were not tired. This team was ready to go. They were enthusiastic. One team, one heartbeat, the character and the leadership, obviously led by Joe. Uh, we wouldn't be here without Joe Burrow. We know that. Uh, the hiring of Joe Brady and him, the way Steve Benz make it work together. Uh, the, the improvement of our defense after the Ole Miss game. I think that uh, the defense took it upon themselves, the leaders took it upon themselves, and they knew. I think when we, we didn't talk about it, but we uh, changed from first to second or something like that because of the defense. I think that was an advantage for us. Our guys took it on a chip on their shoulders and said, hey, man, wait a minute. It ain't going to be on us. So all those things combined, but this team was competitive. And you got to give Clemson some credit. Now, they're a good football team. Venables had a good plan. Great game. We're going to stay in the same section, a couple rows back. Uh, Ed, Dan Wetzel, Yahoo Sports. Uh, your career has had ups and downs, a lot of doubters. A lot of people never thought you'd be a national championship coach. I'm wondering uh, two things. One, at any point during that, did you ever doubt that you could coach at this level and lead a team to this level? And what does your story say maybe to all the people out there whose careers don't just – rocket ship to the yeah. top and, and go similar to you. Yeah, you know, I remember um, I'd get the job at USC and I felt that I was ready to be a head coach. I felt that I had learned from my mistakes at Ole Miss. With that. At that point in time, I wasn't. Uh, I remember sitting on the sofa in my house. I had a year to, to reflect. I remember watching SEC games and, you know what, I know I can compete with these guys, given the right place. I mean, 
you got to be in a place like LSU and have great coaches and great players to win it. Uh, I don't think I could have been somewhere else and we had the success that we had so fast. So I think it's a combination of being in the right place at the right time. I think it's a, a, a perseverance, too. And, you know, man, you know, people are going to talk talk and all that, but you can't let it affect you. you got I use that as an internal motivation. People, you know, they tease me the way I talk, uh, tease me the way I look. Uh, and when, you know, it's kind of funny. Uh, the things that I was doing at Ole Miss, I was ridiculed for. And now I push myself in the jaw and everybody else you likes it. So it just depends where you're at, man. You know, it just, but it's been a great ride. I got to thank my family. And listen, man, I'm at the right place at the right time and a great school with a great coaching staff. I have all the resources that we need. Uh, I mean, you come to LSU, you just have to do it right and you're going to win. I have time for just a couple more. We're going to start right here in the front. Yeah, and he kind of stole my question. Doug Mouton, WFL TV in New Orleans. 2014, you're at Mandeville High School games as a parent in the stands. Yeah. Five years later, <laughs> you have delivered the greatest season in LSU history. Yeah. And I know you have said all year it's not about me, but have you let that or will you let yeah. that sink in just for a minute, that arc from five years ago watching Parker play to today? You know, I think, you know, God had a plan. I got to say it, man, it's not me. And all I did was follow the plan. And without him, I wouldn't be here. Without my family, I wouldn't be here. And then I said, I'm thankful for Coach Miles for giving me a chance, man. He hired me at LSU. It's where I wanted to go. I knew I was going to coach. I didn't think this was going to happen. I didn't know. I thought, you know, when I didn't get the job at USC, I said, hey, you know, hey, you might be an assistant the rest of your life. I just love coaching. But everything fell into place. And uh, we're just getting started, man. This is this is not the finish. Uh, I want to be here at LSU for a long time and, and, and win many a championships at LSU, and this is just the beginning. Again, right down here in the very front. Hey, Ed, uh, Michael Cobble, WBRZ in Baton Rouge. Uh, Clyde seemed to be the key that got the engine going tonight. Just how critical has he been, not just to your season, but even tonight? He's the heart of our team, man. He is tough. Again, he's 6'4", 270, and, and Clyde's going to take it upon himself. I'm glad he was healthy. Uh, those runs he made at the end of the game were very critical. Uh, he's hard to tackle. Uh, he's got great balance. He has a great trunk. Uh, I don't know if he's leaving or not, but if he does, I think he's going to have a great career, and he's going to go down as one of the greatest Tigers ever. Let's take our last question from the television riser in the back. Shakira Martin from Lafayette. Coach O, you've talked all season about blocking out the noise, but when you reflect, what was it that made this team so different and inspired you guys to just finish the season strong? Yeah, you know, I, I do believe the uh, the leadership, the character, the grit, they wanted to win. And they believed in our coaching staff. They believe in the work ethic. Uh, we started last January 17th. We've been working for a year. All those things combined, and obviously we had a. I thought we had a great schedule this year. Uh, playing Auburn and Florida at home really helped us. Uh, having a great coaching staff, uh, getting Joe Brady from the Saints, going to the spread. I think that uh, you know when we didn't score many points uh, uh, with Ben's Bingham, we talked about going to the spread. I thought that was critical, and then we got the right guy, we got the right uh, quarterback to run it. You know, we had athletes and uh, the receivers, the way they played. So a lot of things had to fall into place. Coach, thank you very much, and congratulations. Go Tigers. Hey, Coach O. He's always giving credit to his assistant coaches. One in particular, Joe Brady, brought the spread system from the New Orleans Saints, won the Brewers Award for the top assistant in the college football this season. Everybody around Bad Rouge is really hoping they'd have Joe Brady to set up some kind of dynasty here. But there you see the graphic. He is the new offensive coordinator for the Carolina Panthers going back to the NFL. Can't knock the guy for taking a better job. Well, it happens. I mean, lots of college football teams lose members of the staff every year. Okay. You know, obviously we're close to the LSU situation. It's a good problem to have when people want to take your coaches. Okay. I, I don't, I'm not worried about it, and I'm not reacting like a lot of people are. LSU's at a spot in the college football world where they're going to be able to promote somebody that can do the job or hire a quality person to come in and be a part of the staff. I don't really see that as a problem. And, you know, if, if Joe Burrow learned this system in a year, so did Steve Ensminger. That's right. Okay, and Ensminger's been a quarterback and offensive guy all his life, and he, he doesn't talk to the media a lot, but he's a very smart guy. That's right. So I, I, I don't I, I don't think LSU fans should worry about that at all. You should just welcome whoever the new addition to the staff is, and you don't know if somebody else might leave. 
Right. Now, and I'm not going to say any names. I'm not trying to imply that there are rumors about somebody leaving. But you just never know when you got shake up at the college and pro level at this time of the year. And the closer you get to February 5, which is the signing day to finish out the class, you won't have anything. But then, as we've seen in past years, you get that two, three, four days after signing day, then you, you might see movement at LSU or somewhere else. Right, gotta be thankful for LSU fans, for Joe Brady and all he did for the LSU Tigers. Most, most points in college football history. I mean, he left the blueprints. Ensminger did call the play still this he, season. Yeah, he doesn't take the playbook with him. That's right. He, still he may take playbook. a copy of it with him. What he implemented at LSU, you cannot go back from. There will not be another power eye offense where it's three, three yards in a cloud of dust. LSU can't go back. The fans have seen what it could be, and you it was too you, good. You can't unscramble the egg. That's right. <laughs> this is what it is. They, they are, you know, I go back. I think I told you this about five years ago. I read a quote from Bob Stoops former Oklahoma coach who's coaching Dallas in the XFL. By the way, I talked to my pal Hal Mummy today. He's offensive coordinator in XFL for Stoops. But Stoops made a comment that if LSU ever learns to throw the football, the rest of the country's in trouble. Because he knew the pipeline of talent. Right. Okay? He recruited many of them, and he knew. I mean, the guy yeah. was a very good coach and a national champion. Well, they figured out how to throw it. They did throw it. The rest of the country was in trouble, particularly in 2019. We'll talk about that and a whole lot more with Mike Scarborough from TigerBait.com. We'll go over the roster, who's coming back, who has declared for the NFL, and what this 2020 LSU team might look like. We'll also, of course, hit on recruiting. Don't go anywhere. Join us after this break right here on Tigers Roar. <laughs> Clarence Bugs here. Coach Roger Kador would take the time to tell you how to catch our brand new show, The Roger Kador Show, but as you can see, he's kind of busy right now out at school boards. Baton Rouge's newest sports grill with food that is absolutely amazing. Catch the show, 8 o'clock Tuesday nights, 6.30 p.m. on Wednesdays and on Pelican Television's YouTube channel as well. You want to come out and have a great time. It's awesome, isn't it, Coach? Mm-hmm. Told you. and appliances. You're dependable independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances. You're dependable independent with nationwide buying power. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugier, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. 
I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Cantea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Cantea, your Italian dining will change forever. For total home pest control, who are you going to call? Call the bug man, 923-BUG. For total pest control for your home or business, call the original Salvant. Call the bug man today, 923-BUGS. We're back on a Wednesday evening from Scoreboards. This is Tiger's Roar. I'm Jonathan Poche, joined with Tommy Chrysan, his very special guest, Mike Scarborough from TigerBait.com to talk about this championship. Mike, it was a storybook ending to a wonderful year for Tiger football. 42-25 was the final LSU National Champions. Coach O, a national championship for the rest of his life. Joe Burrow with the Heisman. Now he's a champion. Couldn't ask for a better story for LSU Tigers. Yeah, it, it's been... It's, You'll never see this in your life, Tom. If, if Las Vegas tried to put the odds on you ever seeing anything like this season, where it was an undefeated season, uh, the, the, the way that they did it, the offensive numbers, the Heisman Trophy uh, in New Orleans, I mean, it's just so many things that went with this team. The odds are, are, are particularly if you're, let's say you're over 40, the odds are about 5%. Um, and it probably maybe is 8% if you're 20 years old that you would ever see anything like this again. Pretty outstanding, Mike. There's been a lot of talk nationally. Is this the best college football team in the history of the sport? It's hard to take away from them when you, when you mention all the awards, all the records, Heisman and national champion. Uh, yeah, they're going down top three best teams in history. I tell you what, they're, they're, you know, I've watched just about every clip that's out there. Uh, Eisen, Cowherd, Reese Davis. Uh, I think Eisen was darn good. Joe Clad, you name him. I've, I've seen everything that the talking heads have put out there. And a lot of them are saying it's, it's our, the best team ever. And some are, you know, kind of parsing a little bit saying, well, if it's not the best team ever, they've definitely achieved more than any te team ever based on, you know, all the ranked teams that they had to beat to get there, the numbers uh, and, and all that. So. Uh, it's, it's a historical football team no matter what, and of course, we didn't get 24 hours to really bask in it before Joe Brady announced, uh, or didn't announce, uh, uh, that it was, uh, he was going to Carolina Panthers, and um, of course now we got all the exodus of, of players saying they're going pro, so. But uh, White House on Friday, parade on Saturday, and uh, uh, soak it all in, the LSU fans, that's all I have to say. Yeah. I agree. Soak it all in. Uh, the chances are you'll never see anything close to this again. Not that they're going to fall off the map. I think they're going to be a really good football team again next year. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, a lot of these guys that we knew were going pro we, 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 was, were expected. Um, you know, I don't think anybody thought, uh, you know, Phillips and, and uh, you know, we're waiting to see what Kerry Vincent ends up doing. Uh, he's kind of been talked about. Um, but just about everybody that has announced so far, um, you know, look, LSU's going to have a lot of holes to fill and new, new faces. Um, now and there's going to be new staffers. Um, so, and then, of course, the schedule flips where you go to Auburn, to Florida, to A&M, Alabama at home, and Texas at home. Yeah. And then some unique uh, differences next year with uh, Ole Miss, uh, with Kiffin and uh, Mike Leach at Mississippi State. 
Mike, you brought up Joe Brady and him leaving for the NFL. Look, the blueprint has been laid down for LSU. Ensminger has still called the plays this season. He knows the offense. There are some assistants that also work closely with Joe Brady. Who's somebody that might step up to fill that open spot for the Tigers? You know, it's, you know, does, does, what, what does Ensminger end up doing? Uh, you've got Munoz on the staff that uh, has kind of been like a, a quarterback's uh, guru behind the scenes, uh, analyst inside the building. You know, is he a possibility? Uh, well, you know, there's some other possibilities that uh, people have texted me today. Um, it's just going to be real interesting. Uh, woke up this morning, uh, several of my Nebraska uh, guys that uh, I work with uh, on, the, on the network uh, questioned me about Mickey Joseph rumors up there. And so there's going to be a whole lot of changes. So this makes it a very pivotal offseason for, for Ed Orgeron. Um, not to say it's going to be anything like 2008 after Les Miles uh, won the championship and uh, you know, replacing Bo Pelini was uh, Malvit Malvito. Um, I don't think anything like that's going to happen, but um, the, you know, uh, you got to trust that uh, he's going to make the right hires at, in where he needs to get them. But it, I think there's going to be a lot of uh, new, new, a lot more new wrinkles than we thought uh, a month ago. Well, when you win a national championship, they, you know, things like that happen, and most college staffs have some turnover after each and every season. But LSU's at a point now where I got to believe Coach Orgeron will be able to make a decision to, you know, bring the best people he can in to continue to recruit and develop players. Well, and look, and, that, and that's just it. You know, what we, we've been talking about for the last, you know, several months. Um, 2021 is a big year for quarterbacks. LSU's in great shape with Caleb Williams, the top quarterback in the country from Washington, D.C. Uh, what we've been getting is that he wants to make a decision early in the year. So they need to solidify the offensive part of this thing uh, in, so that uh, they can either lock him away if it's not him. Uh, Garrett Nussmeyer from Texas is, is another top quarterback on their board. And he wants to make a decision by Easter. So... Um, all, all this could be very interesting how it plays out and um, and certainly you know all those quarterbacks are going to want to meet whoever's new and um, uh, I'm interested to see when the spring game spring practice dates are um, uh, probably earlier the better Mike in your opinion is next year's quarterback job miles Burns' job to lose I think so um, you know with the losing the two receivers on signing day, and you know, is there a possibility that they hold back one or two spots for 20? I, I don't think there's any uh, thoughts of having a fifth quarterback on the roster with a grad transfer. Um, but let, let's say you know your spring practice goes a certain way, and there's a quarterback that realizes he's mired there and wants to move out well you know they want to keep four quarterbacks on the roster so um you know in, in that scenario does it do, do they look to see about a, a, a transfer quarterback there's a couple of tra uh, quarterbacks that entered the transfer portal over the weekend a guy from wake forest and a guy from houston uh, one was rumored to be interested in lsu but you don't think that's going to come to fruition do you no i i, I if something like that were to happen i think it would be a result of what was uh, ob what, what may have been obvious during uh, after spring football is, is over, um, and if you're getting the inkling that um, you know someone might be looking to transfer out, I mean, um, you know, obviously you've got four scholarship uh, quarterbacks. Two two true freshmen are there at midterm. Uh, both Max Johnson and T.J. Finley have already participated in practices, so. Um, you know, do you hold on to all four of them beyond next football season? Um, you know, can Peter Parrish make a move? Yeah. Um, you know, it's, this is a pivotal spring for Peter Parrish. Right. Moving to the defense side of the ball, we know that Jacob Phillips and Patrick Queen have declared today for the NFL draft two linebackers in the middle of that defense. Who are some new guys that might step up next season? You'll see them on the field at that spot. Well, it, and that's why they really went big for, for running backs. Um, and now I think that this might also change the things. We're talking about what they need to fill spots with here with the rest of um, 
the class of 20, do they all of a right. sudden think, you know, maybe we, we might want to look uh, at another running back? But, you know, certainly, um, you know, there's a reason why, you know, Phillip Webb's in this class. Uh, uh, he's a big timer. Anton S- S- Sampa, of course, he's very similar in build to Patrick Queen. Um, you know, Ojolari, of course, who they got uh, flipped over from Tennessee. Josh White, who they absolutely love and is a sleeper in this class. So you you got a bunch of running backs plus what what will be returning. Mike, the deadline, the deadline to declare for NFL draft next Monday, January 20th. There'll be some more names that come onto that list besides the ones we already know. And then it's going to be all about recruiting, getting into fe- uh, February and that second signing date. Who are some guys, some names that we might be hearing about coming up shortly? What guys who hadn't declared yet? Yeah. Well, you know, it, when is Cl- it, when's Clyde going to uh, send his tweet? So right. <laughs> um, it could be any minute, but it, it, it's. You know, I know Kerry Vincent has flirted around with it. Um, you know, we were hearing rumors about Neil Farrell, but he announced this afternoon that he he would return. So, you know, but look, you know, you lose Cushenberry and Sadiq Charles. That's some that's some moves there on the offensive line. Some big timers that that are going to be gone. Um, but you know, look, like like Tommy said, there's a lot of good football players returning and. Uh, we'll, we'll, it's gonna be <laughs> need to get pencil to paper and, and and look at the depth chart once the dust settles on all this. Right, signing day just around the corner. Uh, give us the latest on recruiting. Who LSU fans should be looking out for to uh, commit to the LSU Tigers? Well, no, no official visitors this weekend, I, and and um, you know I, I I think maybe it's possibly because the White House visit on Friday and uh, that uh, might have changed uh, some of that. You know, but usually you, you you would like to have some recruits on campus. Uh, you know, Clemson had their national championship parade, and that's when Travis Hn bidded and then he committed. So um, sometimes you, you could use that parade to your advantage. But there's going to be no official visitors this weekend, so they're going to start stacking them all the last two weeks before the second signing period, the first Wednesday in February. Oh my uh, McKinley Jackson, of course. Uh, you got Gibbs, the running back. Got Kaufman at Rummel uh, that's committed to Georgia Tech. Uh, both those last, those other two kids are committed to Georgia Tech, uh, and there's going to be some others. So, um, be curious to see in the next few weeks who they bring in for official visits. Well, Mike, certainly appreciate your time here on Tigers Roar. Before we let you go, tell everybody about TigerBait.com and how can they get subscribed today? Yeah, go to TigerBait.com. We've had an incredible run of new subscriptions. We're absolutely loaded. We're putting uh, anywhere from uh, eight to, to a dozen new items on the site every day and a lot of it is free some of it's premium and um, go on to tigerbait.com give us a subscription one dollar gives you a one week trial period and uh, uh, choose the uh, annual option it'll save you thirty dollars only ninety nine dollars a year and uh, that's what most people are going with now thank you mike look forward to talking to you soon all right thank you Mike Scarborough, TigerBait.com. Always enjoy having him here on Tigers Roar. Uh, a wealth of knowledge. Nobody really knows the lineup like he does. Very tuned into recruiting for the state of Louisiana. Great job, Mike Scarborough. Well, TigerBait.com, if you're out there, you know, give it a try. Try it for a week, see if you like it. I'm pretty sure you're going to. Mike's done a great job for a long time with that. Been a great friend of Pelican Broadcasting so and a personal friend of mine. So check it out, TigerBait.com. Before we take our take next break, TK, remind everybody what you're doing for U-Triple-S-A and what's going on I'm down there. The marketing director for U-Triple-S-A Baseball in Louisiana and Texas. Uh, uh, connect with us on social media. It's real easy to remember. Louisiana, U-Triple-S-A, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Tournaments are starting statewide, middle of February. There's a ton of events and special things planned. So I uh, appreciate you checking out Louisiana, U-Triple-S-A, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And uh, we're elevating the game. More kids playing more baseball. We hope to see you at the park soon. For those who don't know, TK was on a hot streak this season. Had a couple of predictions that were right on the money. Talks about that in his podcast. So everybody about Talking Sports with TK. Well, I got a new logo. We just put there. It is Talking Sports with TK. Uh, it's about one year old now. You were with me when I said I'm going to start That's this right. thing. That's right. That's right. And uh, the response has been tremendous. Thousands of people listening. And, 
I got some different guests, and we, you know, a lot of stuff on LSU football, obviously. Uh, Talking sports with TK. It's on all the major platforms: Apple, Spotify, TuneIn, you know, Anchor. I mean, it's everywhere. You can find it, or you connect with me on social media, and we, you'll get a link every time. Uh, Tommy Chrysan on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Talking sports with TK has its own Facebook and Instagram page. But the new logo that was just released today, so lots of good stuff there. Appreciate you checking it out. Tell your friends, Talking Sports with TK with this man, Tommy Chrysan. Come back and check out Tiger's Roar after this break. We have a lot more, including player interviews after Monday's championship game. Come back. This is Tiger's Roar. Good. We've been fighting the war on drugs for a long time. We answer the phone 24-7, 365 days a year. On a busy night, we answer hundreds of calls. This war on drugs needs our intervention. Since 2014, Addiction Hope and Helpline has helped people struggling with drugs and alcohol. When the phone rings, we help people when they need it the most. When we get a caller into treatment, it feels right. It feels good. It's a blessing. If you're struggling, drinking, using, and need to get clean, don't suffer alone in silence. Call Addiction Hope and Helpline. Our people understand, and many are also in recovery. Call for support and strength. You can call for someone who can't or isn't willing. It's an act of love. Together we can help you beat this thing and erase addiction from your vocabulary once and for all. Call 800-383-8177, 800-383-8177. Super E, we have a new client to sign. You need to fly out and meet them right away. I'm on it, up, up, anyway. <laughs> okay, who closed these window? Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Contea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, your Italian dining will change forever. For total home pest control, who are you going to call? Call the bug man, 923-BUG. For total pest control for your home or business, call the original Salvant. Call the bug man today, 923-BUGS. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling Nothing could ever bring me down Nothing, nothing could ever bring me down Taste the feeling They said I could find you here. Why are you fishing? Our company's got to ship out two full color brochures and 20 color copies. You're killing me! It's done. Designed, printed, packaged, and shipped. How? You just got to know the right people. Baker Printing, the printing people. How come you get to fish in this private lake? Like I said, you just got to know the right people. You can know the right people, too. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. Hello. Hola. Ni hao. Experience what the Baton Rouge International School can offer your children. Now welcoming displaced students for short and long-term stability. The 
kickoff winner Jamar Chase, sophomore number one, had nine catches, 221 yards, two touchdowns. Really opened up the game for the Tigers. They didn't know what was going on defensively with Clemson until they found that one-on-one -on -one matchup with Jamar Chase. Well, he, he was a better athlete. He won that battle many more times than not. You know, it, don't, let's don't forget the line. You know, there were a few sacks, but let's don't forget the line allowed Burrow to find these guys. And I mean, it just the team effort, the old cliche there. But Jamal Chase, I mean, what, what a football player. He did drop a touchdown that would have added to his yarders and his touchdown mark. But hey, had a great night, two touchdowns. Here is Jamar Chase, sophomore wide receiver from the Rumble Raiders in Metro Louisiana. Jamar Chase. First one uh, we call cat play, you know, straight goals. You know, uh, me and Joe caught eye contact on press coverage and took the shot. Second one, uh, we had slants. He gave me a a pump, and uh, I took my time with it and got open on it. How important was that first one, given that Clemson was dominating first quarter? Um, I mean, they got up. I don't know how many points they got up, but they got up for a little bit. You know, um, we've been down before. You know, it's always how you bounce back from a situation. Sure. OG said the other day, these guys don't blink. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of what we saw here? Uh, yeah, that's exactly what you've seen here tonight. That's exactly what you've seen. Tell me about that. Uh, you know, just having our guys back and defense having our offense, offense having our defense, and we the whole defense offense having special teams. That's all it is. Did you feel like you personally needed to make some kind of statement or were you motivated by the semifinal game? No. I mean, uh, <laughs> like I said, beginning of the year, Every team got to pick their poison. Uh, it's a nightly bracket adjustment, you know, that involved me and Terrence to go off tonight. So <clears throat> it's just a matter of time for one of us. This is your hometown. Was it everything that you expected it to be? Was it more now that you've been through? Honestly, I didn't know what to expect, man. Um, I didn't know what to expect, to be honest. Do you think that this wide receiving core is going to go down as the most prolific wide receiver core? It's the offense going down prolific, period. When did you feel like the momentum kind of shifted? Because it looked kind of like that, uh, that second big long catch you had, the one where you didn't get the end zone. Mm -hmm. That was sort of fired the team up a little bit. <laughs> you stopped and let that guy go past. <laughs> I actually did slow down. I didn't think nobody was behind me, but uh, I was pretty tight on that play. So um, I'm just glad I caught the ball and made the play. So I mean, I'm just trying to make a play on the field. Jamar, you know, this season has just been all about playing the next game, being ready for the next one. It's only been 20 minutes, but can you just kind of put into some perspective what you guys accomplished tonight? Uh, we accomplished something big for LSU, uh, for Louisiana, for Baton Rouge, you know, uh, just putting on for the state. To have this type of game in your hometown, I mean, for you especially, I mean, I know it was special for LSU fans and, and the team to be 60 miles down the road, but for you, a Rummel guy, mm -hmm. what, what did that mean to you to have this type of performance? Uh, it it means a lot, to be honest, man, especially le legit growing up here, you know, growing up two different places, man. Um, I'm just happy my parents got to see me play, you know. Um, they never missed a game, you know. Um, Rest in peace, my grandma. I wish she could have seen me play tonight the way I put on the show for her. You know, it's um, it just hard work that they put in tonight. And were you surprised that you know they kept single coverage on you all night? Was that like a shock to you at all? Nah, that's just something I look forward to. You know, um, you never know what it, we actually didn't know what they was gonna do tonight until we got out here in first second series. That's when we figured it out. Once you guys started to get them blocked, it seemed like there were some adjustments made. Once that happened, and Joe had time, that was kind of a turning point, right? Uh, yeah, you know. Um, Everything is handled up front by our big guys, you know, and shout out to them, you know. But um, they take care of all the dirty work. Uh, Dad, too. Um, Clyde, also. So those guys take care of the dirty work for the receivers to get open. I'm not sure that just from a, your own fan perspective, just your knowledge of college football, like the history of it, and just like successful seasons for quarterbacks. But I mean, it's the most touchdown passes ever, mm -hmm. most total touchdowns by a quarterback. I mean, could you? Could you just describe Joe Burrow and I mean it, what he's done? No one's done it before. And Joe is a very great athlete. Um, I seen him make a big difference from last year to this year. Honestly, like a, I mean a huge difference. But it also could have been an offense. You know, it could have been a lot of things that that, that happened last year. But um, for Joe to come back the next year and and make himself separate from all the other quarterbacks this year is is something big on his part. Do you have a message for the state of Louisiana and all the fans? Thank you and congratulations.
congratulations. That was a message from Jamar Chase. To all the LSU fans out there that supported him, the guy toting the rock for the Tigers, number 22, Junior Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Some are waiting for his text about when he's going to go declare for the NFL draft. He had 19 attempts, uh, excuse me, 16 attempts, 110 yards, no touchdowns, but led the Tigers in rushing. We'll let you guys hear from Junior running back. Here is Clyde Edwards Hilaire here on Tigers Roar. Um, you know, no comparison. Uh, that was a team full of different guys, different offense. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's as simple as that. We, uh, immediately after that loss, we drained everything. I mean, it's, you know, it wasn't about last year. It was completely about this year. Do you think you'll ever see another team in college football like this team? I hope. I hope it would be, you know, next season this, this same team. But, uh, you know, ultimately, man, the, the makeup of the guys from – you know, Joe coming from Ohio and Thad doing his thing from, you know, transferring from NC State. Uh, Jets being, you know, that two-star athlete that nobody wanted to accept. Um, ultimately, everything that I went through, you know, Jamar being able to having to prove himself, Tears do, do, do the same thing. And then that offensive line always being doubted. I, I don't think you can make, make a story, you know, as good as this one. Uh, and then ultimately for us to win it all, it doesn't get any better than this. Hey, Coach Clyde, Legend, um, how Clyde, important Clyde. is it on the national championship shirt, legendary status? <coughs> what does that mean to the team and to you? Legendary what? State? Legendary status. Oh, well, you know, being, uh, we can't be touched, and it's as simple as that. Um, you know, now, you know, this is the time to say we are the best offense uh, in college football, and I feel like we will continue to be the best offense in, in college football, and, you know, it, it doesn't, nothing can compare to everything that we've done up until, you know, this national championship. You know, you know they're, they're going to be, everybody's going to have their doubts, and, you know, they, they were stopped in the early on. But ultimately, man, it doesn't get better than the offense being able to stay composed like we did and, and come out on top. The defense held you on lockdown on the first, you know, few plays of the game. What did you guys do differently? What did Clemson do differently on their side of the football for you guys to get really out there? Uh, man, that defensive coordinator, being able to get his calls in so late was, you know, the biggest thing because we always, we do checks also. And, you know, he would check to certain things and certain looks, and we have been checked out of something, and everything he checked into was, you know, it was it was working perfect. We we had uh, we had a lot of uh, three and outs, and ultimately they had a lot of three and outs too. So it was it was really at the beginning of the game to battle the defenses, and then ultimately who can be the offense to come out on top and, and make the adjustments and everybody and, and who can make the plays. Jamar had a good game, but how much of it was Thaddeus getting involved, you getting involved, Jeff getting involved, everybody else getting involved? It's always, it's been like that the entire year. Um, once, you know, somebody shut down or they, they want to say locked up or some, or there, or that's the key to, to, you know, their success or as a defense to shut somebody down. It only opens up, you know, the, the lanes for everybody else. And, you know, when, when you have, when you have a, a, a blade with five blades connected to it, I mean, it's, you can you can only do it. You can only cut yourself, and that's how that's how I could, that's how I describe this offense. What do you think this means for all the people across this state? As simple as I can put it, life. It gives it gives this state the the motivation of uh, coming together, and it's crazy to think uh, a sport can do can can have such you know magnitude on a city and a state. Uh, I mean. It's going to bring so many people together. When you go out and, and you know, roam the streets tonight, it's going to be nothing but pure happiness. And it's all because of the sport. So there you have it. LSU goes 15-0. National champions for the first time since 2007. TK, thank you for being here. I know you're a big baseball fan. Looking forward to when pitchers and catchers report. Go ahead and give us the two-minute abridged version of what's going on with the MLB right now. Oh, it's a mess, man. It's just awful, horrible, whatever you want to say, you know, the blatant cheating. You know, athletes have always tried to get an edge in every sport at every level. I mean, I had somebody teach me how to throw a spitball in college. Now, I've messed around with it in the bullpen, but I was too scared to bring it to the mound and get caught, you know, doing something illegal. Anyway, bigger story here. Major League Baseball, they had a problem with the Astros. Red Sox, and we don't know if other teams have done something similar. We don't know. But it's a huge scar that's going to take a long time to cover up uh, for many, many, in many layers there. And I mean, I could literally talk about this for hours. I've listened, I've read the Major League Baseball report, I've read all nine pages. 
I, I've listened to just tons of people talk about it. It is a mess. It's going to put a cloud over the season. And here's the big thing. You know, the steroids thing was a big problem for baseball. But when the steroids started with McGuire and Palmero and, and Conseco, it wasn't against the rules. Okay? Right. So now you get to this thing, and this was clearly against the rules. The, the memorandum from the commissioner after the Apple Watch in Boston, uh, which, you know, caught a camera. Uh, they, to make sure this isn't happening, and then it happens in Houston, it happens in Boston that we know about right now. It's an ugly situation. Fans are forgiven. They're still going to show up and watch the Astros play and the Red Sox play. I think it, it affects old people like me, the purists. Just kind of bothers you a little bit, but you know it is what it is, and uh, I think it's a, a bad, worse than the steroid thing, and this is still in its infancy stage. Right. I know the manager for the Astros, AJ Hinch, has been let go along with the GM, Alex Cora, part of ways with the Red Sox. And, and, and real quick, somebody keeps people keep asking why they didn't discipline the players. They can't prove nothing, and there's a players union that would file a lawsuit. There's no managers union, there's no front office employees union. So if they suspend a player 80 games because you you were stealing. Some Times, he's going to file a lawsuit through the Players Association and say, prove that I saw a sign, gave a sign, or looked at a video, and they can't prove it. I mean, prove the advantages given you. Yeah, if somebody's banging on a trash can that a curveball's coming, you still have to hit that curveball. I mean, that's not easy to do still. Well, they probably weren't 100% accurate either. It was probably a time or two when they said, that's hey, fastball, point. and then came, came in spinning. But the bottom line is, at that level, if you know what pitch is coming, you're going to hit more home runs. You're going to get more base hits. You're cheating. You're cheating. Well, TK, I know you talk about this and a whole lot more in your podcast. One more time, tell everybody about Talking Sports with TK. Talking Sports with TK, all the major platforms, lots of fun stuff there with myself and plenty of guests. Talking Sports with TK. Uh, just connect with me on social media. Tommy Chrysan, you see the spelling on your screen, K-R-Y-S-A-N. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We'll take it from there. We certainly appreciate you being here on Tigers Roar TK. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. You've been a great co-host. A lot oh. of wealth and awesome. Appreciate your contribution. Thank you. Keep and doing a great job. Looking forward to having you. It was great future. to talk to Mike, too. Well, thank all of you out there for watching Tigers Roar. If you missed the live show, and check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash Pelican Broadcasting. A great way to follow everything with Tigers Roar and everything else that goes on with the Pelican. Glitter and Gossip, the Roger Kadar Show, Overtime with A.D. Roman Banks, Southern University Athletics. Roman's in the house now. He's in the house. Looking forward to a great episode. It's 2020. Rome. LSU has won a national championship for the first time since 2007. Congratulations, Coach Joe, and all those players who have now declared for the NFL draft. Thank you for your contribution to the team. Got to thank Joe Brady for putting out the blueprint. And once again, thank you for watching Tigers Roar. Come back and join us next week for a brand new episode right here from Scoreboards. <laughs>